Okay. All right, good evening. Okay. Welcome to the uh, March 27th, 2017 meeting of the Arlington Redevelopment Board, uh, recorded by ACMI. We have a continuation of a few public hearings tonight. Uh, first is special town meeting, Article 1, Zoning Bylaw Amendment, uh, to see whether the town will vote to amend zoning bylaws to change the definition of open space usable. Uh, we do have many of the proponents here from the residential study group tonight, so I'd ask you all to come up, introduce yourselves, bring us up to speed. Um, I had left public comment open over the last week. I don't believe we received any. We did not receive any additional comments other than this afternoon, and the person who submitted those comments is here and coming to the table. <laughs> all right. Hi, I'm Elizabeth Pyle. I'm a member of the residential study group and member of town meeting. Steve McKenna, uh, member of the residential study group and resident of Arlington. Uh, Rick Valorelli, member of the residential study group and town building inspector. I'm Wendy Richter. I'm on the master plan implementation committee and also the ARB liaison of the open space committee. Okay. Thank you all for coming. All right. <coughs> you just bring us up to speed on the article. A little overview of what it does. Do you want to go, Steve? Sure. <coughs> so as we've stated in the past, what we're trying to do is make it work for the protection of um, eliminating the garage unders. And by therefore, one of the um, alternatives we came up in order to persuade developers to uh, negate the garage unders is to reduce the open space dimensional um, in one direction from 25 feet to 20 feet. Uh, this would enable developers to then put garages within the front foundation wall if they need to by limiting some livable space. And we felt that this would also give an opportunity that if they were to do so, that we're giving them back some of the square footage that they'll ultimately be losing, whether it be a single family or two family dwelling. So we're just trying to limit the open space. We have had some calculations done, and I think that uh, it, it doesn't appear that it's going to increase the size of houses much at all and in some cases in many cases the houses would be smaller um, because developers still have to meet the gross floor area all the other dimensional requirements so based upon that um, in order to maintain the 30 percent open space um, it's very rare that they'll ever get down to 20 feet but we need to we feel as though it's a good adjustment to have okay how did you come up with those calculations um, i had a civil engineer do three or four different calculations for us using 6,000 square foot lot 60 by 100 and using the garages inside the foundation wall as well as on the driveway. Okay. And those have you shared those with the department to I did. assist in presentation materials? Yes. Excellent. Great. I don't really have anything else to add, uh, just that this was part of um, the overall compromise that our group worked on to try to um, eliminate the garage under design for the safety problems that the uh, steep driveways uh, have caused and also the massing and scale problems associated with having the garage under house design. Um, and this was the incentive that we came up with. It's only for new construction and uh, I urge the board to support it. Okay. Thank you. Any comments from any members of the public? Uh, I wanted to say something oh, too. Sorry, I sort of think <laughs> I'm not really on this committee, but I'm supporting what they're doing. But I, as a member of the open space committee, felt like I needed to sort of flush out what was going to happen to the open space with that reduction of five feet. So I ran some numbers also, and we can check to see you know how close our numbers are. But I um, found that with the 20 foot setback, the house can be a little bit bigger. This is just generic box house. Um, I think it was 150 square feet overall, but, but that means that the open space then needs to be a little bit bigger as well because it's a 30% of that gross floor area. Mm -hmm. um, so you do end up with a slightly larger house, but the um, uh, open space would be a little bit more. Um, one of the unintended consequences could be, as I was m massaging these numbers, because that's how it works, where one goes up, the other goes down kind of thing, is that if a two-story house were built, would say an unfinished attic, you could end up building to the setback lines without, because you'd have, you could get the 30% the, the of the floor area 
just in the back. So it would be less because the square footage of the house would be less mm -hmm. if it was a bigger footprint, but only two stories. So that was something uh, that I found. Okay. So. Okay. Rick, did you have anything? No, I mean, I think um, th th there's a lot of sections of um, 6.00. We have lot coverage, we have open space, we have setback issues. So I think if you look at everything as a whole, um, it would probably have little impact, if any, on the size of the additions, for one thing. And I think it's, it's a trade-off to um, uh, reduce the horizontal dimension from 25 to 20, simply because if you're going to maintain a 15% slope maximum grade in the driveway, the structure has to be set back 26 and a half feet from the front property line, just mathematically. So you're taking a little of the front setback and you're giving it back in the backyard to maintain the open space, which is always a challenge. Okay. One other comment, which is that um, open space is, um, the, the usable open space is contiguous and it's not clearly spelled out in our zoning regulations that it has to be contiguous and I think that I don't know where that fits into the bigger picture, but I think that needs to be documented, that that's what is meant by uh, this usable open space. Uh, I, Rick, I also like the yes. comment that you had, um, that you brought up to me earlier, that if the addition is going to um, be 750 square feet or greater than 50% of the primary structure's gross floor area, mm -hmm. they would need a special permit for that anyway. So that is yet another check. Correct. So I wasn't at the last meeting, but I did, uh, I did see that that question was raised. So we're kind of protected, if you will, by the fact that you can't exceed 750 square feet of gross, additional gross floor area or exceed more than 50% of the original GFA of the structure without a special permit. I know that came up last meeting, but um, I just wanted to touch on that. And regardless of the size of the addition proposed, you still need 30% open space. Right. Ken, any questions? I just want to touch base on your thing that's saying it's not clearly written right now that uh, the open space has to be continuous or continuous. Mm -hmm. uh, Rick, how's that enforced it, right it's now? Not, I thought yeah. It isn't enforced yeah, that way, it, right? It, it's, been, it, it's something that we stay consistent with. It's been passed down to Mike and I over the years. Um, it, it, you cannot take two chunks of land combine them and create 30% open space. It has to be one piece of land contiguous. Okay, so that, that's what it, I thought. So it, it may not be clear, but it is enforced that way. It is, correct. Well, we can, we can make it clear yeah. by our vote. We can add in the word contiguous, as oh. it may be appropriate to sure. our recommended vote, <coughs> to make it clear that mm -hmm. what's being voted on. So I actually did just uh, add it in here. So the second paragraph of the vote, uh, after two in parentheses, it says no horizontal dimension is less than 25 contiguous feet for newly constructed single two-family and duplex dwellings where parking is at surface level, no horizontal dimension shall be less than 20 contiguous feet. Okay. Is that your point? Yeah. I sort of understood that, but I just want to make sure it's clear that that's how they've been enforcing it. Correct. That's a good change. No, I have no other questions. Andy. I am all set. David. Just wanted to clarify one thing. So, uh, special town meeting article one is ex uh, the change is expressly limited to new construction. Mm -hmm. And I remember we had a little bit of confusion when we were considering article eight um, about whether that applied only to new construction or just generally. And are there any scenarios that if if Article 8 passed that uh, a, a, an existing cons construction could take advantage of the changes in Article 8 to do something we would consider undesirable? Have, have you thought through any scenarios where that might be possible? Are you talking in an ongoing project or a project that's been started? No, I mean, if, if someone were, were going to make a change to their property, uh, but it wasn't new construction of a, of a new structure. So uh, if someone were putting an addition on their home and wanted to reduce from two parking spaces to one, would they be allowed to do so? They wouldn't be able no. to trigger this one that you're working on tonight because this okay. is just for new houses as an incentive to keep the parking at grade. So. Um, 
there may be um, some changes that um, they're, they're, that would go under Article 8 for additions or renovations on existing houses. Yeah. But this um, special town meeting one only applies to new construction. Okay. I mean, there was at least one public comment that raised the possibility that something undesirable could happen if Article 8 weren't limited to new construction. And I've been struggling to come up with a scenario. And I, my question was, had you come up with any scenario? Mm -hmm. So we talked about that. Uh, I tried to get an answer to that. Our group, the residential study group, has not met since the last meeting. But mm -hmm. Rick had um, and Mike Byrne had um, uh, been talking about that a little bit. Do you want to just say what well, you thought? Well, the, the, the way I understand it is this only applies to new construction. And some of these articles only apply to new construction <coughs> and or additions greater than 750. Mm -hmm. Nothing in between that I am aware of. I think that with Article 8, there are some changes um, in Article 8, which mm -hmm. we voted on last week, right. that um, would apply to existing houses. Um, the comment about um, how it would apply to a reduction in um, parking and whether that would lead to a bigger house on the lot, um, I um, had put that question to the building department. And Rick, you told me mm -hmm. tonight that you thought that um, there would have little or no impact. That's correct. Yes. That's correct. Because 6.0 has a lot of checks and balances. It, it does. I mean, th we're only touching on a small part of 6.0. Um, if somebody's going to change the park, I, I don't want to get off track, but if somebody's going to reduce the parking area from two spaces to one, that would have very little impact on the size of the addition. Don't forget, we can't exceed 750 feet anyway. Um, and that would, I mean, it's a possibility, theoretically, it could make the addition slightly bigger on a large lot, but it's circumstantial. And there's also the check that if you make the um, house bigger, you need more open space, which then would shrink back the house again. So there's this interplay where every time you try to make the house bigger, um, you need 30% of gross floor area for open space, and then your open space needs to be bigger too. So I think that on um, the standard size lot, there's not going to be much impact. That was where I was saying that if you were doing a two-story house, that it then you would actually reduce the open space because you're not, it's not really reducing the open space, but you wouldn't be as required to have as much open space because the floor area would be less. Okay. But if, in any event, the addition that you could build would be... Um, Five, right? But we're only talking. We're talking about five feet. Okay. Right. It's going from twenty feet to twenty-five feet to twenty yeah, feet. Yeah, but so a five-foot change. But yes, I understand it could be at two levels. Yeah, but my my point is that if you only have two levels, you don't have a third floor. Mm -hmm. The square footage of the house is smaller, so the amount of open space that required is also smaller, and that's when you could push out the found the the footprint of the house could be closer to taking up more space so there, because there'd be less open space. But that would be a smaller house, too, because it wouldn't be as tall. Mm -hmm. Unless they had an unfinished I attic. I if you had an unfinished attic that gets finished, that might be a you know unintended consequence that you get a bigger house just because it's called unfinished. Okay. Anything else? No. Jean. I was a little confused about the contiguous conversation, so you're going to have to <coughs> help me out here. Are you saying that the entire amount of required open space around the house has to be contiguous and they can't be separated? That is correct. It has to be one piece of land. You cannot have two parcels. Minimum size open space we can have for a small house is 25 feet by 25 feet. Mm -hmm. So for example, you could not have a piece of land in the backyard 25 by 25 and a piece in the front yard 25 by 25. Add those two up and satisfy the open space requirement. It has to be one contiguous piece of land. Could I have 25 in back, 25 on the side? And 25 as long as that joint, correct, like an L. And yes. And by our reducing it from 25 to 20, mm -hmm. does that allow us to go back front 20 and side 20 and front 25? 
I'm, I'm trying to understand yeah. the complete impact mm -hmm. of this. So that would still be considered contiguous if it were 20 on the side and not 25? If it gets changed, yes. um, if it gets changed to 20 feet and you have an L shape that encompasses the back mm -hmm. and the side, you cross, yeah. So we would allow people to then count it even though it's, it's less. Well, it wouldn't be less because no matter what, we need 30%. Right, I understand that. Yeah, but so it's if it's an L shape, uh, rectangular, square, it, it doesn't matter it, mm -hmm. as long as they are contiguous. Mm -hmm. And, and if we were to go to the side, the side backs are 10 feet now, so now you're bringing that 20 feet, so the, the size of the house is going to be that much smaller on a 60-foot lot right. in order to be contiguous. Right, so you would need at least 20 feet. If you didn't if have you it in the rear, it, if you wanted to make If you didn't have it in the rear, if you didn't have it in the front. Right. So this would... Okay. Essentially would make the building smaller. Or larger On a 60-foot lot. On no. a 60-foot lot. Would ultimately it, make it, it smaller. It's if you tried to get it on the side, it's no giving one people that. the opportunity to bring it five feet closer to the side lot and still use the side lot as part of the contiguous open space, right? Well, well you could. I mean, it, it, okay. it's it's design. If you mm -hmm. can make it work with that design, that would mm -hmm. satisfy it, providing that this gets reduced to 20 feet as opposed to 25. So so where does that, where does the five feet become an incentive for a builder? How does that make a real difference for a builder? Then? It's actually minimal for uh -huh. the developer. Which explain, is, explain. Because on, on certain mentions, we had the calculations done and there's only one instance mm -hmm. in which um, we looked at 6,000 square foot lots that the developer would go from a 25 foot setback 25-foot dimension requirement to 24 feet, mm -hmm. and that way they could still meet the open space requirement of 1,410 square feet. Mm -hmm. They would need, uh, they would get 1,440. Mm -hmm. So they only actually ended up using one foot, and the size of the house was smaller because here it's 4,700 square feet to compared to 5,000 square feet, which they can do as a matter of right by now. And if you take a look at the average two-family um, two home on a 6,000 square foot lot, mm -hmm. they'll end up, they could with the dimension requirements build up to a 5,000 square foot house. Mm -hmm. But if we change the from 25 to 20 feet, then what they're actually getting is a 4,700 square foot house if they need to use the 20 foot setback for the dimensional use. So they're getting a bigger house. They're getting a smaller house. And, and to your point, what you mentioned earlier is if you went to the side yard for the 20 foot open space, because you have your 10 foot setback, so now you're making the house 20 feet off the side yard setback, so the house is automatically going to shrink. So instead of a 40 foot house, you'll end up with a 30 foot house, 30 foot wide house. So um, the setback doesn't count as part of the, the setback doesn't count as part of open space? No, you still, you still have to meet the setback requirements for the building. Unless so it's the minimum dimension. Unless it's, unless it's the minimum dimension, so mm -hmm. we're allowing oh, people okay. a smaller minimum dimension and still be able to count it toward the contiguous open space. But you shouldn't confuse open space with setbacks. I understand the difference, yes. Yeah. If I could, Wendy actually has a great diagram showing a cutout in the side. Yeah, right. it might be It shows easier. the difference between the, um, you know, if you can see the street for both of these houses in blue, green, this is the 20-foot setback, this is the 25-foot setback. You need this much more, um, sorry, I mean, this much more of the hatched area to meet your 30%, uh, and this is existing, so you need that much more to get the 30% of the footprint of the gross floor area. And I can pass this around. So, so if they park their car on the side of the house, is that still considered part of the... No, open, open space. I'm sorry. Open space has to be free of vehicular parking. Okay. No driveways. Mm -hmm. No garages. Mm -hmm. Open space. And actually, when I explain it to people um, that come in to see us, I, I literally say uh, uh, grass, grass and shrubs. So if they park their car in the grass, it's 
fine. But that, it, you, you, it, you cannot it. park anywhere. Uh, we have sections of the zoning bylaw that address that, mm -hmm. other than the required parking space, which is paved area beyond the front yard setback. You're not allowed, you're not allowed to park on the grass. That's correct. Ever, under any circumstance? Not legally. Right. Okay. Great, thank you. I have one, one more thought, right. which was a, um, if you were talking about a bigger lot, say you had a 80 foot frontage, so it was an 800 square foot lot, um, it, with this, you could actually have a much bigger house because you could have that 20 foot setback. You'd still have that play of those gross square footed floor area versus the open space, but you could then only have a 20 foot strip that wrapped all around and then you would also include the front yard space. So, I mean, I'd have to run some numbers on it, but I, I wonder if we're not, we're only considering the small lots, how would this affect a bigger lot? And maybe it should only be allowed in lots that, I don't know, I don't know where the, you know, how to adjust for that, but. Actually, I have one other question I can ask. But do you know how often people get special permits so they don't have to meet the open space requirements? I, I don't know. They are, the, the biggest example of that and the toughest, of the, the, the most challenging properties are the two-family houses. Um, they're usually split into condos. The uh, owner of Unit 2, the second floor in the attic, wants to create more space in the attic. They do not have any open space to satisfy any additional gross floor area. So they have to go before the ZBA. Um, I, I believe, I can look at the records, and if you'd like to call me tomorrow, I can tell you exactly. They do vote on that more favorably than not. Very common request, by the way. For new construction? For or existing construction exist that lacks gross floor area. But not new construction? No, because you have options of design with new. You have control. Okay. Other questions? Comments? All right. <coughs> so we'll give it a minute to look at the diagrams. Thank you all. Appreciate You're welcome. Um, <coughs> would entertain a motion uh, if it's favorable. We need to be a motion to be approved or endorsed as amended. To be in a language of contiguous, please to vote for oh, action. Where, where is that language inserted exactly? I inserted it. Uh, <coughs> the last two sentences there mm -hmm. after the two in paragraph, uh, the second paragraph. It says, uh, I'll begin at the beginning of the sentence. Open space should be deemed usable only if, one, at least 75% of the area has a grade of less than 8%, and two, no horizontal dimension is less than 25 contiguous feet. For newly constructed single, two-family, and duplex dwellings where parking is at surface level, no horizontal dimension shall be less than 20 contiguous feet. Should we say 20 contiguous feet to be deemed usable open space? Because it's a different sentence. There's, I'm not sure the wording, the proposed wording captures the intent. Um, because you were saying that the minimum dimension must be contiguous, um, but not the not that the open space must be contiguous. Um, so if you ha going back to the 20 foot in the front and 20 foot in the back, mm -hmm. um, you know, the, there the um, you know if I've been, if I've heard the the earlier discussion correctly you wouldn't be able to count the two separate pieces, but each of the separate piece would have a contiguous minimum dimension. Right. Thank yeah. you. Yeah, I was yeah. about to say the same thing. I don't think this gets it. Okay. The concern. 
Do we want to do anything with lot size, which um, was brought up? I, it, it seems to make sense for a 6,000 square foot lot, but maybe at some point it doesn't make sense at all. I don't know where that break point is, though. Mm -hmm. I wouldn't recommend that at this time. No, I think that would information about that specifically, the differently sized lots. We have mostly been talking about and using as an example the 6,000 square foot lots or less. So I think that's what, that's my recommendation. I'm not sure we can make the contiguous adjustment in this. No, I don't think we can. No, I, I, don't, I, don't, I don't think so either. I was wondering if we could make it in the yeah. top of that paragraph. Such the space one, may right? include Open area, let's see, contiguous open area accessible to and developed for. Which space can include contiguous open area? You could have to put it in the first paragraph. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Well, it seems to go beyond the intent of right. the yeah. yeah, it's not quite. related to the dimensions, so I, it might be okay. <laughs> might still be within scope, and I think that if we're adding it to this par first paragraph, I think that could work. Um, You're saying to add the discussion it's of also, we, of we just heard from ins the inspector that in practice, that's what they're doing. We would capture in the report that that is the intention of the article. Yeah. When we get back to zoning recodification, <laughs> might be another time right, yeah, where we have we to go that. back to. I mean, I th this I think maybe language. you could do it if you changed in the first paragraph where it says part or parts. If you change that to contiguous part, mm -hmm. I think we should save it for now. Let's save it. We do know that it's enforced a specific way. Um, we can put that in the report. If we need to revisit it, we can revisit it. Um, we can have a discussion about lot size. Um, but you pointed out the 750 foot. Doesn't that limit the size of the plate you're saying? 750? That's what it's so for, that for large Yeah, that triggers a special permit for you by the yeah. ZJA. So not in construction. I don't feel like I have enough information to talk about. No, the I lot think we can, we can look at lot sizes again down the road. Um, Although, if this was all predicated on what, 6,000 square foot, mm -hmm. could we say 6,000 square foot or smaller lot? So that if it's more than 6,000 square feet, they still have to meet the 25 foot dimension, but 6,000 or less, it would be 20. I think one of my concerns is that this is part of. The Article 8 as well as Article 1, and I think if we start making changes, adjustments, it might cause some issues. Um, despite the points being made and understood, I think we should probably keep it the way it has been drafted. Um, because we are trying to restrict the garage owners, and that's the biggest issue we're trying to do. Mm -hmm. Well, but we've pretty much prohibited them, not prohibited them, made them very difficult by Article 8. So this is just what do you give builders in return, it sounded like. And it sounded like to me they need something for a 6,000 square foot lot. And that's what this whole conversation was predicated upon. But we don't know what to do with larger size lots. So maybe we limit this to 6,000 square foot lots. And then at some point we'll have to figure out what to do with larger ones. Um, we didn't, um, when, when we were trying to draft this, we weren't just looking at 6,000 square foot lots. I mean, that's the most common situation in Arlington, but um, we looked at all different 
lot sizes, when we were trying to come up with the recommendations, and the thing that we kept coming back to uh, more and more is that on these smaller lots, you have a greater impact on your neighbors right around you. So I like the fact that this is a control on the smaller lots, and yes, it's it's a little bit bigger. Um, it, it's it's this dimension is increasing slightly, but you have the other balance with the open space, and the way it shakes out is that you have pretty much the same size house. Um, on a larger lot, if you can build just a slightly bigger dwelling um, as a result of this, um, and I'm not totally sure that that's the case, but if that were to be the case, that dwelling will have less of an impact on the immediate neighbors because you're not right on top of each other in the same way. So. Um, we felt like in our group that it's important to protect um, the neighbors in close proximity to each other um, because in Arlington where the lots are small we feel the impact of a larger house more on a smaller lot but I don't if the lot is just a little bit bigger and you can build a house that's five feet bigger in one direction that's not gonna have the same impact on the immediate neighbors because you're not right on top of each other in the same way. And I think the bigger issue is also, in addition to that, we're, we're talking about 60 by 100 lots. Not all lots are exactly that dimension. Right. So you could have a lot that's 6,400 square feet, but mm -hmm. has 80 feet of frontage, yep. and it doesn't have the depth, and we're trying to avoid, that's where the developers were putting in these 26, 24 degree slope driveways. So this is what we're trying to avoid there. Right, and then 6,000 might not be the right cutoff, because if you have, what if it's a 6,000, you know, 200 square foot lot, then you wouldn't want to lose those. I mean, I don't know what the appropriate larger number threshold is, um, or even how common those lots are, but right. I, I wouldn't, it, we, we but, spent so much time back and forth, but what if you do this and what if you do that? I, I would not want to change that dimension now without a I, I think it's a, Yeah, I think it's a good question to be asked, but more study mm -hmm. is needed to figure out how that works. And <clears throat> Take a good look at what lot sizes actually exist across town. Okay. We did look at that somewhat deeper. I have yeah. a question mm -hmm. that might help with this with the building inspector. If how how often is the um, usable um, open space what determines the size of some of the bigger houses? A lot of the time. I mean, the the, the designers are very much in tune to our zoning bylaw and their max and alpha lots, which they're entitled to do. Um, I just wanted to touch on the open space and um, the definitions and the word contiguous not in there spelled out. That's all part of plan review. So we go through a whole host of things that aren't actually spelled out in the zoning bylaw. And usually uh, due diligence with the designer will call us for guidance or uh, it'll simply get rejected at the uh, during zone review and uh, told uh, th th they'll correct it and make the necessary adjustments to make it work. Okay. Other questions or comments? Okay. I would motion to um, <coughs> approve and support this article <coughs> number one as not just as is. As is, as, as written. I second that. All in favor? Aye. 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 Great. Thank you. Thank, Thank you, you all. You. Great work. Thank you for coming. Yeah. I'll close the public hearing on Article 1. Move on to Article 2. Zoning so bylaw amendment for the recreational marijuana moratorium. Jenny. Aye. I don't have anything further to add from last week, and I did not receive any additional comments or feedback. Any comments from those in attendance this evening? Seeing none. Go ahead, David. So I, I really have no objection to this. Um, so the legislature last December uh, extended uh, the effective date for uh, retail recreational marijuana sales to July of 2018, I believe. So by extending this to the end of June, we'd basically be kind of maximizing the amount of time we have to consider whatever guidance eventually comes from the state. Um, I'm just, in practical terms, given how late that guidance may, may come, you know, it, we may not actually have enough time to uh, be able um, 
to have town meeting deal with it, even with that extension. Mm -hmm. But so so it may it may serve no practical purpose to extend it. But I, I don't really see any reason not to extend it to the end of June. I think it gives us an extra safety net, just in case. Mm -hmm. uh, and I don't I rather err on the side of caution. Right, that's my opinion. Good. Yeah. <coughs> I'm following with. It. I, mean, I was just going to say, I mean, we don't know exactly what the guidance will be and when we'll get the guidance, and it could come much earlier than projected, and then we would have time to deal with it at spring town meeting next year, Yeah. or not, like you're saying. Right. So, I mean, it, it could be that we very well will have the time to deal with it and file something and know how to handle it through zoning. Yeah. I move to support that the ARB supports special town meeting article 2 zoning bylaw amendment recreational marijuana moratorium. I'll second that. All in favor. Aye. 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 Moved. Closed public hearing. I should do the <coughs> Special I town meeting article 2. And you continue to go on. Well done. All right. Jimmy was kind enough to provide us a draft report for town meeting, which we will review. I think that was circulated to everyone last night. Okay. And, uh, and with Laura's help. Yes. <laughs> um, and also, a uh, slightly edited version was circulated, I think. <coughs> it just had a couple of little editorial formatting changes, right. um, which is the draft that you have in your packet. Correct? Yes, I guess. The one that was put on the table. The one that yes. was put on the table. So it's a very minor, couple of minor formatting changes. Yeah, no substance. So if you read it last night, there's been no changes. So, so we're voting on this well, so next Monday night. Yeah, this is really just meant to gather some feedback. We only wrote the report based on the annual town meeting articles. <coughs> We've drafted some language for the special town meeting articles, but obviously you just took your vote tonight. So we'll capture the rest of the dialogue that occurred this evening so that you can review that for next week. And then it'll be fine. So I just wanted to get, I think we just need the feedback on the first part. For now, if you have any comments, which I'm thinking you do. Yes. Well, I I had a couple of thoughts uh, on the discussion um, related to Article Nine. Okay. Mm -hmm. um, one of them is um, just a word choice issue. Okay. Um, uh, so in the uh, second sentence of the discussion summary, it says the board cited a concern that, that the proposed buffer zones were so numerous and large that they effectively precluded the siting of MMTCs anywhere in town, mm -hmm. subverting the will of the voters who supported the mm -hmm. So I don't like the word subverted because I don't think that's exactly what's happening. Because uh, that, it's not... Um, I. I feel like it's inconsistent, perhaps. Uh, I, I was thinking of the word thwarted, but that also has sort of an intentionality I don't think we need to state. Okay. I think we could take out that clause entirely, uh, beginning with subverting ending with marijuana, and <clears throat> then it would read so numerous and large that they effectively precluded the siting of marijuana, MMTCs anywhere in town and possibly opening the town to potential litigation. I think that's correct. Why do you need it? I, I can live with that. Yeah. yeah, I think the point of that clause was merely to point out that many people in town had a majority of voted in support of medical marijuana. Is that what that clause is? Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Right. yeah. And related to that same issue, um, the second to last sentence, it says board members pointed out that adding buffer zones has the effect of reducing the number of sites available for this use. And yes, that, that's true. Buffer zones would always do that, but that's not the point. The point is what we just said. So I, I don't think we yeah, can take that. Yeah. Sentence. We can just take that out then. Yeah. Sorry, tell me where that is. Uh, is the that second to last sentence in the discussion in the article pointed out. Take that whole sentence. Board out. members pointed out that adding buffer mm -hmm. zones has the effect of reducing the number of sites available for this use. Okay. And what did we decide what we want to do with that above? Mm -hmm. Do we want are we taking out that clause or changing it to inconsistent with or taking that out? Taking that out. Deleted the whole subverting mm -hmm. through yeah. the way yeah. of the voters. Mm -hmm. Okay. 
But leaving and possibly opening the tent mm -hmm. to potential yes. litigation. Yes. And then, um, thank you for, for noting the, that uh, we discussed creating a study group, mm -hmm. uh, if necessary, to present appropriate zoning controls to future town meetings. That dis I, was, I was thinking about you know, where should that study group live and what might the results of that be? Because I, I based on the, some of the concerns that we heard in, in the public hearing, I'm, it wouldn't surprise me if some proposals came out of that study group similar to what's happened with the residential study group where there were some non-zoning proposals. So mm -hmm. do we want to say anything that to allow for that? <clears throat> I wrote that that sentence or that clause, uh, and I, I actually specific, was specifically specific to say zoning controls because any zoning controls would come from the ARV. Anything else would have to go through the board of selectmen. It would be their job to present that to town meeting and make those recommendations. I'm open to either. But Wait, if you if you added the language that I think you might be suggesting it could read zoning or other controls for review by a future town meeting. Or you could just delete the word zoning and just could say appropriate, appropriate controls. Appropriate yeah, controls. Because you also, did talk about there were potentially some non-zoning. Right, and whether zoning well, itself was even appropriate. And right. we'd want a broad-based group, which yeah. is what we were also talking about, kind mm -hmm. of like the one that you had initially. Right. So creation of a broad study group or a study group? Well, I think you can just say creation of a study group, but I think if you take out, if you just say to present appropriate controls instead of appropriate zoning controls, I think that's fine. Because that, stu that study group would be recommending the controls, right. uh, whether to us to put forth or the mm -hmm. board of selectmen to put forth. So I think that's fine. Yeah, that's So we deleted zoning. Yep. Mm -hmm. And I just suggest for review by future town meeting, a future town meeting. Mm -hmm. okay. okay. Unless you want it to be multiple town meetings. <laughs> That's up to future. For review. Jenny, can you yes. say it again? For review at for future review town meeting. By a future town meeting. Or at. For review at. With the um, yeah. the table for Article Six was I forget was there some question last week about something missing from the table? Oh yes, we but restored we, uh, that. We just, <laughs> we what what was that? that? We just learned that the AG's office accepted that minor clerical error. Yeah, that was identified from last spring's annual town meeting. Good. Right. Mm -hmm. Yes. So we're all set. Okay. All right, so I think if anyone has further suggestions beyond tonight, you can send your changes directly to Jenny. Okay. And then by Thursday? Friday. Thursday would be great. By Thursday, <clears throat> so that we have a final report to circulate by Friday. Okay, let's go out. Or Sunday night, I believe. Yeah, probably earlier. To be done. I would guess. Yeah. yeah. Okay. One one other thought uh, on um, Article Eight, um, mm -hmm. where uh, it notes. Uh, Article 8 addresses the safety issues caused by steeply so sloped driveways. Do we want to be specific about the slope direction because that caused angst in yes. the past? Sure. Yep. It, it does say downward slope, but maybe it just... Well, not in the first the sentence. The first, um, right. that one doesn't. I think right. it does say that somewhere else. Where does that well, this downward one go? I see a steep driveway again. I think he's looking at the first sentence. Well, the, the second, the second yeah. sentence says it limits a driveway's downward slope. Um, I don't know where you are, David. 
favorite. There's page. actually that whole second paragraph has three steep leaf steeps in it. <laughs> There's Are we in the part here, of the first semester plan? Can no, we say the second no, article. Warren article 8. Second so I think you say Warren article 8 addresses the safety issues caused by steep downward sloping driveways. Steep downward. Steep downward hyphen sloping. I request that the next sentence says downward slope. Yeah. So, mm -hmm. so right. that should probably say. Yeah. Side paragraph and underneath the house with it. Yeah, and the impact on the streetscape is is different for downward versus upward sloping, right? As well, so. Do you want to say downward again in that last part, last sentence, or you think you got it? These steeply sloped could then be the, these steep downward. Can we just say the these? These driveways. These driveways. wanted to make it crystal clear that we're talking about downward sloping driveways, not upward sloping driveways. Mm -hmm. Because people got concerned about that the last time around. Well, that was a hot topic. Yeah. Yeah, that was a big topic. Yeah. I mean, you got to put downward at the beginning then. Not if you so we did. Yeah, yeah. so we Sorry. just amended the, uh, the right. second paragraph to so I think make that one pretty clear. Got it. <coughs> um, Anything about below grade, at grade, and below grade? Did that land in here somewhere? Just in the in the first sentence, it says accessing below grade garages. Mm -hmm. Question the parking needs of the proposed minimum park price and further question the elevation of the building and suggest that a more yeah, inviting. inviting. That's inviting? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Never mind. <laughs> do you want to change the way it's spelled? No. Nope. <laughs> if that's correct, they do have sweeping tiles. <laughs> <laughs> no, no, no. That was. Uh, Approve the minutes every sixth. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. I abstain because I was not at the moment. Thank you. March 6th, 2017. This one's not a spelling one, I have. <laughs> Go ahead. Um, on the fourth paragraph, first sentence. Uh, I say that the creation of a buffer zone would inhibit future offices opening if a daycare place would come um, place after. Well, I meant, I meant to say is that 
by putting a buffer zone in there, <coughs> potentially by having more daycare or any other <coughs> childcare, it would preclude it, uh, any uh, any location of any medical marijuana be located in the city, which would then open us up to litigation. I'm not essentially zoning it out. Okay. Is that not? I thought I, I, that's what I meant at that time. That first sentence. Yeah, I know what you mean. It's, you were trying to say that if it was open before the. No, not if it was open. Just saying. No, it, if the app before the application was made. Yeah, if the application, yeah, if the, if the center was open before the application was made, the, the amount of space that, that, would, that would... Like a place that today might be okay, yep. right. but in the future, right. a daycare center opens within and creates a new buffer zone yes. that right. then closes out another part of yes. the map. And then essentially it would, it would inhibit not having any yes. spots available, <laughs> which then would open us up to litigation. That's what I was trying to say about the buffer zone. And I just think you have to say we're to open before the application yeah. of the medical yeah. marijuana treatment. Yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. Right. That was my meeting. I didn't before didn't say. the application. Before the special permit application. Was filed. Was filed, yeah. Would that make the sentence read more like well, what you were I, intending? Yeah, but also I want to say about the way we open us up for litigation because we basically zoned out uh, in <coughs> this case of, for a, a, a site to be placed. Yeah, I'm just looking to see if that came up earlier in the conversation. I don't know. I, just, I know that was what my meeting was. Yeah, no, I was just uh, sometimes the... Okay. okay. You're going to add the sentence and would... Sentence cover, cover what you said, which is. Mm -hmm. I mean, if I meant for that, yes. Yeah, what would it be? A, constitute a, a zoning, alter, an alteration of zoning? <coughs> that makes sense. I, that's something along the lines of the zoning week. out of the use. Right. That came up much more the next week. It did, and yeah. it's also part yeah. of the special. Yeah. Yeah. But in relation, we were talking about it in relation to 11 Water Street at the time, right. I think, when we were having that conversation. Yeah. Yeah. So um, I would just add, and would amount to zoning out that particular use, something like that. Yeah, that's fine. Right. I'm okay with that. Work with that. Okay. Sure. That was my, you know, I was trying to get it. Maybe I didn't say it clear enough, because no. I usually don't. Okay. Sorry. Anybody else? Okay. Anyone else? No, it looks good. Okay. Okay. Um, a motion to approve in the minutes the Arlington Redevelopment Board minutes of March 6, 2017. Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 All right. Well Thank done. You all. Seeing nothing else on the agenda, I think we have a motion to adjourn, please. Motion to adjourn. Second. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Aye.